in a long time. Oh, come on, those beatings, those people are resisting arrest. Okay, so video for the new Harmonic Dyne G200. It's kind of reasonably new. I think it came out in the last maybe month and a half. The case is a briefcase style. It's made good. It's got not super cheap latches like on some cases that they've got that look nice, but in actual function and usage, they're pretty bad. This is nice. This is a nice layout. Please stick around, especially the beginning, because this is the happy time. It's going to start to go downhill from pretty soon. But the, the presentation is quite nice. I like these pads, how they feel. They don't really work for me in real life. These came on this set, but I switched them because I kind of had to. Let's take these out. Um, in the hand, they're not too heavy. They feel nice. They're, I'm not feeling any obvious plastic. It's got uh, what looks like a carbon fiber headband uh, can't be sure don't really care if you're if you need carbon fiber type strength on your headband I don't know I think regular steel um, does fine you can kind of stretch it out one thing that I don't like about the suspension is if I'm gonna have this type I'd like a little bit of the bouncy as I'm adjusting and moving it on my head I don't get that yank this does have that but I actually prefer the other kind of style but that's a kind of a nitpick the driver on the inside is one that apparently to some reviewers is familiar. They've seen it with other sets. Um, I'm not really sure. If I'm going just by my ear, I'd say this isn't a really great driver um, in this configuration. Now we're starting to go downhill. I have the cable for it right here, which is a nice cable to the eye, but it's very, very janky. Um, who cares? I, I kind of do, actually. I don't like wasting my time with cables. That said, if you've ever bought the Susvara, this is a better cable than comes with that $6,000 set. Everybody changes that stock cable, don't they? Um, I don't know if you'd have to change this. It's just kind of a little bit unwieldy. It comes with a XLR termination that's metallic, which is nice. Um, it's got one that goes from XLR to 4.4, and then it's got another one that goes XLR to stereo plug, pretty much. So the accessories, the presentation, these are all doing good. It's when you start to listen to it that stuff starts to fall apart. And the Zeus is in this video for a very particular reason. I found this set to have too much mid-bass and on a track, maybe I'll throw it up right now. Um, it's called Sweet Leaf by Black Sabbath and it's a vinyl rip, it's a lossless file. It's actually very good. Planars play it like a boss. I can hear the drummer, I can hear the bassist, I can try to focus on one or the other while I'm listening. With dynamic drivers, a lot of the time, um, it gets a little bit soupy, little, some masking, they're kind of crossing over, there are two instruments that are playing at around the same frequency area at the same time, and um, it can get difficult. Planars excel at that, something like the HE6SE, um, the Modhouse Audio, the Susvara, to a greater extent, makes that experience clearly different and much more authentic and enjoyable to my ear because I can actually hear the instruments. It's obviously not a poor recording. Um, it's something that is good to evaluate, just the kind of resolution of stuff. I thought that the Zeus had too much mid-bass and on something like that Sweet Leaf caused uh, a really poor replay. And then when I knew that and I listened to lots of other stuff, I just thought this isn't a set where you would be focusing on uh, a library like mine where you've got a low end. Even rock and roll, uh, my ears are tilting towards listening to the drummer and the bassist and also vocals and are they husk and lift it up. And, um, on critical evaluation, this set, I didn't like it, so I didn't do a review for it because I thought if people are happy, they're happy, fine. But now it's gone. Lots of people have it. My opinion doesn't really matter. I wasn't a fan, though. I thought that the bass tuning of this really precluded it from being um, for libraries that were R&B, hip-hop, and rock and roll really to some extent, which is what DQ'd it. Why am I talking about this? Because this planar set, not dynamic driver, planar set has an interestingly similar problem as that. Whereas this was kind of bloaty and soupy, if you were, no headphone is perfect, ask people what's the problem with this. It also gets kind of sharp with uh, 
the vocals at the beginning of Sweet Leaf, Ozzy Osbourne can get a little bit on you. That's not the that's the opposite of this one. Ozzy Osbourne doesn't sound very grating. He sounds kind of distant actually. And the overall replay sounds like I'm listening to a dynamic driver. So there's the full circle that I'm trying to make because I don't do scripts. As I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, it sounds like it's got a veil, but it's a planar. And then I went downstairs and dug this out, took it out of the box, and then was happy to find out that I can just switch these because that's how this, that works. And I was right. This set, is that the right set? This is the right set. This set suffers, suffered from the same issue that this newer set does but for totally different reasons, but made by the same company. If you like low end, it's a problem because even though this is on a scale pretty flat, it sounds like it's polluting the mids and everything after it, and you're getting a semi low res replay. This is not a really good headphone. And now I'm going to bring up a couple things because I talk about, I talk to companies in these videos because they watch my videos. The earphone game is being accelerated through collaborations. Whether people like collaborations or not, they're getting tuning hints. KZ, after my collab, they released a set recently that looks a lot like my collab with a little bit less energy and AK, which the original shouldn't have had that anyway. But they kind of are advancing in their overall general tuning, um, partly benefiting to the collaboration because that it's not throwing spaghetti on the wall anymore. So there's a, there's a place for collaborations. and. Uh, Inside pro tip, this has been going on for years. A lot of sets that you guys listen to and love, I was involved with them, with companies that you would be very surprised with. And I'm sure Crin has been involved with other stuff. They're just uh, stealth or the idea to connect the influencer with the set seemed to be the natural next step. But it didn't start a year ago or two years ago. It started at least four years ago. Um, I'm sure of that. Why is headphones, especially when you're nailing almost everything else, the, the, the build quality, the presentation is just, it's up there with the best of them. You've got this down. The curbside appeal is nailed. The build is, it's pretty decent. It's not bad. Uh, there's some nitpicks, but everybody probably has different ones. I don't have a big issue with this. I do think that the pads being flat and flush is not really the best for these. Something that's more angled like is on the Mod House Audio. They've got a uh, kind of an angled pad. All of the pads on that are, I think they're Mr. Speaker pads or something like that. I can't recall, but they fit me perfectly like a glove. Why don't you, I don't know, I'm not really close with Andrew at headphones.com and I'm not really, um, we review completely differently. I'm musical based. He listens to music, but he, he tends to point out on a graph what is good and bad. I, I agree, disagree sometimes, but that's because of my library. But he is a person that's been reviewing headphones before he has the channel he's on now. He had his own one, and it was pretty much headphone centric, if I recall correctly. He's got a long history with headphones. Why is a company like Linsoul? This, com this company is attached to Lin, so I think everybody knows that. Why aren't they reaching out to Andrew and saying, hey, we got a set, we're going to send it to you, and we'd like you to give us some brutally honest feedback and then some ideas of where we could go from there to the next step. And you can keep that quiet if that's contractual or some issue with headphones.com, or you can turn it into a potentially profitable endeavor for all parties involved whether they want it or not, this is business. Um, I really don't think if you continue to release stuff like this and re depend on one big hype video to sell as much as you can, as quick as you can, that that's the best model. I think that the best model going forward is that you latch on to a known entity, a person that is deeply rooted in the community that you're targeting. And with headphones, Andrew would be that guy to me. Um, and start the process slowly and then build from there because if you keep doing this you're just you're wasting you're already in a build quality that's the he6 se it's been heavily modified its original version was just so ghetto it's it's really laughable but i love the sound after it's been adjusted and it's comfortable on my head now it comes to you in a 
cheap box, it's build quality is super cheap, but it's all about the sound, so Hi-Fi Man gets a lot of customers because they, they do sound good. You got everything they don't have, except one thing, and it's the most important thing, and that is sound quality. You're not doing it. I didn't like the Zeus. I never did a video for it. Again, people like it. I'm not here to rain on people's parade. If you like that, fine. Once I listen to something with a busy low end, especially a bassist and a drummer, just, I mean, again and again, it, it's, it's gone. I won't even talk about this set. Then this comes and it looks just so fantastic. I'm thinking, they, they must have talked with some people and just put something wonderful together. Then I listen to it and, yeah, no, no, no. This is the one of the weirder sounding planars I've ever heard because it sounds like a dynamic driver in the ways that dynamic drivers are obvious, and that is they can sound kind of slow. They can create a veil across the mids and the treble. Mm, why would you go with a planar and then saddle it with the problems that plague dynamics? It doesn't make any sense. It, it's a mistake. Some of that's got to do with the padding, uh, and the rest is other that could have been sussed out if you had sent it to somebody privately, low pro, whatever you want to do, and said, listen to this, how does it sound? I'm, I'm an IEM guy, but I love earphones. I could have, I could have helped do better than this. And, and, and like we've done years and years and years, I, I'm not, I don't say anything about my relation to it. However, publicly, Andrew's the guy, in my opinion, you ought to send something like this to Andrew next time and start the process of well, however that goes forward but at least get someone to say you know what um, and then get the feedback feedback is everything instead of getting feedback from me now publicly and other people um, I'm gonna sit down and look at other videos after I do this I don't if they love this I'm go it's gonna blow my mind I saw the videos for this about two months after I had this because I think I got one of the first ones. This is serial number five on this one, so one of the first five, and I, I couldn't believe what I saw. But it's preference, musical library, volume, there's a lot of variables, so it's just, it is what it is. I would say no. I wouldn't recommend this at any price, actually. I'm not even bashing on this. It something sounds good or it's it's below that. I don't think this is a very good set. I think this was half the price of this, and that made it uh, more available to a wider audience. And so a lot of people got it. And then again, there's preference, musical library, and apparently this fit a lot of people. I didn't like it. When I listened to this, it reminded me of that set incredibly, because it's planar and dynamic. And listened to it, thanks to having the same type of terminations, and weirdly, suffering from kind of a low-res, veiledish replay. I'm giving it plenty of power through a Jotunheim um, 2 out of a RME ADI, which is plenty to power the Hi-Fi Man and the Mod House audio and some stuff that requires some energy. These don't really so much. Um, it c it's got nothing to do with that. They're not underpowered. It's just not a great set. I'm going to go ahead and skip the sit-down because it, it's, ar it's already dead. And let me use my remote since I bought one. And I'm out. Come, come.